Ah, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, high-class growers, we're going to be talking a little bit about evaporation in aquaponics. But before we jump into that, I want to thank you guys for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. All right, so let's jump right into it and see what we're actually yapping about today. This question here comes from Eichmann. What's going on, Eichmann? It says, hello, aquaponics guru. As usual, your insights are very enlightening and full of substance. Well, thank you very much, Eichmann. I absolutely appreciate that. It says, I would to request that you do a video on how to reduce evaporation in aquaponics without compromising the health of both the fish and plants. How will covering the fish pond affect fish growth, feeding patterns, especially covers that do not allow light into the pond? All right, Ike, man. So you're basically wanting to know how to minimize the evaporation um, in the aquaponic system. You want to minimize your water loss and you want to keep as much as you can possibly keep. So let's go on a little bit into evaporation for those of out there that may not know what it is. And then from there, we can kind of break it down as we kind of go into some of the things that affect the rates of evaporation. So um, evaporation, basically, in a nutshell, is pretty much going from your liquid state and, you know, going into the vapor state, right? In this case, we have our water uh, molecule. What you have in the water is you have your water molecule, your H2O, your hydrogen atom. You got two hydrogen atoms and you have one oxygen atom. Now on that hydrogen atom, it has a partially positive charge, right? And then on that uh, uh, oxygen atom, there's a partial negative charge. And what happens is the end of that uh, hydrogen atom, which has that partial uh, positive charge, that bonds to the uh, negative uh, partial charge on the oxygen atom and that's how water pretty much sticks together they create these bonds which are known as hydrogen bonds right they create these bonds which hold these together now what happens for evaporation to occur is that those water molecules they have to have enough kinetic energy or uh, pretty much energy in motion for one of those molecules to break free from that bond right and then pretty much go into the atmosphere as, as vapor right and that's how evaporation occurs and this happens under the boiling temperature right this is occurring under the boiling temperature it's happening pretty much at all different uh, temperature ranges but um, it occurs more as you increase the temperature so as we increase the temperature in our water right those particles those hydrogen um, uh, or those uh, water molecules excuse me they begin to move faster and then when they collide into each other they get enough energy they transfer the energy and then eventually some of those water molecules are going to be able to escape as a vapor right so maintaining your water temperature is one way that you could decrease the amount of evaporation now I want you to know that evaporation is inevitable it's going to still occur you know, regardless of what you do, unless you just completely close off the entire system, which you're not going to have, an, you know, if you close the entire, all the surfaces of your aquaponic system, then you're pretty much not going to have an aquaponic system at that point, right? You have to have some um, exposure uh, to the air. There's going to be some type of, even when you have your net cups, there's still going to be some exposure to the air, right? So the lower you keep your temperature, the lower rates of evaporation there are that's going to going to occur right so that's something that you can keep in mind now when you're doing a raft system because we have these you know these you know these uh the the sheets on top of the water what that's doing is blocking out the heat right it's not it's preventing that the, that uh those that heat energy from penetrating into the water and reducing the amount of energy that is being put into the water and it's kind of cooling the raft right so this is already pretty much doing what it can you know pretty much do to reduce the amount of evaporation as if you're doing it passively 
right? You can always add, you know, water chillers to cool your system. But passively, this is what this is doing. It's keeping the temperatures down. Now, as far as your fish tank, you don't really want to completely enclose the fish tank and block it off from all light, right? You want to at least have some sort of natural environment for the fish, right? So you don't interrupt their natural patterns. So what you can do for the fish tank is you can either, what I do um, is keep a, a shade cloth on top of it. So I significantly reduce the amount of heat or the amount of um, the heat and the amount of light that's going into the tank, right? Put a shade cloth on it. You can also put your uh, tanks under a canopy, you know, have a big shade canopy and place them underneath there where it's getting indirect light and not getting the full power and the full, um, you know, force of that, the, you know, the sun. So that's what you would want to do when it comes to that. And that will help keep those temperatures down and reduce some of that evaporation, right? Another one of the factors that contribute to evaporation is the relative humidity, right? The lower the uh, relative humidity that you have, the more um, evaporation there is that's going to occur. Now, relative humidity, basically what that is, is it's the is pretty much describing the characteristics of the air right it's describing the amount of moisture that the air has in relation to the amount of moisture that the air can contain at a at a given temperature right so when you hear that you know there's 100% relative humidity what that's describing is that the air is holding 100% of the capacity of the moisture capacity Right. It doesn't have any more room to hold any more, more any more moisture. So at 100 percent relative humidity, there's going to be no more uh, evaporation that occurs. Right. As you go down to 50 percent, what that's describing is that the air is holding 50 percent of its moisture capacity and it has room for 50 percent more. That's basically what that's breaking down. So relative humidity definitely plays a part in evaporation. So, for instance, let's say you live in a dry area like Las Vegas or Phoenix, Arizona, where any given day you can have, you know, a, a temperature of, let's say, 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not high, especially in, in those type of areas. But we'll just give that for an example. 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 35 degrees Celsius. And those areas will, can experience relative humidity, you know, down to, you know, less than 10 percent, which is saying that the air or the, the air is only holding 10% of its capacity. So it has 90% uh, more capacity to hold the air. You take that uh, area and you can compare it to a place here like Central Florida or any place pretty much in Florida where you can get 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius with relative humidity around 80%, right? It's muggy out here. The air is holding 80% of its moisture capacity. So when you compare those two, a dry place to a muggy place, you know that those that dry desert is gonna have much is gonna have much more evaporation than the muggy place, right? Because it doesn't have much more room to hold uh, more uh, more moisture, right? So that's thing that's something that you can factor. If you live in a dry area, you're gonna experience a dry hot area. You're going to live, you're going to experience more, more evaporation, right? Your aquaponic system is going to lose more water through evaporation than mine is over here. So if you're concerned about the evaporation rates in a dry area, you can put yourself together, you know, a protective culture, something like a greenhouse. You can add a misting system in there that can, you know, can pretty much moisten the, uh, the, the air and, prevent it from evaporating as much, right? That will help, that will definitely help. Some people come in there and they'll spray, use mister bottles and they're just coming there, you know, they'll spray around the area to so increase that moisture and reduce that evaporation, right? So that's another uh, tip that you have to keep in mind. That's something that you have to factor in, right? Another thing that affects evaporation is wind. Right. As the wind blows across. Right. It's moving that moisture out of the way. 
and drying those area, drying that area. So we have wind that comes through here. There's a lot of moisture around here. Wind that comes through is blowing it and essentially drying it, reducing the humidity, right? It's moving it out of the way and creating more spot or more area for the room, for, uh, for more uh, vapor to kind of come up and moisten that area or that air, right? So wind is another thing. Now here, when it comes to wind, the thing that you want to consider is that that's one of those areas that you pretty much probably want to leave alone, right? Because you don't want to have stagnant air when you're growing plants because that's a breeding ground for bacteria, fungus, and mold, right? So you want to have air movement when you're growing plants. So in that case, you know, that's one of those other areas where you're going to have to take a hit when it comes to evaporation. Right, there's all, you want some air movement going, you want air flow, right? So these are some of the things that affect evaporation and, and some of the little instances where you can kind of control it and minimize it. But like I said, in the, event, in the end, it's still inevitable. You know, you're also getting evaporation, a certain type of evaporation just from growing plants, right? It's called transpiration. When the, wa when the plants are taking up water through the roots, eventually, that water is coming out through the stomates in the plant leaves, right? It's all it's coming out anyways, right? So that's a natural process. So evaporation is going to be inevitable. So there's a few things that you could do to minimize it. You know, we're already doing it passively. If you're doing a um, a RAV system, NFT, it doesn't. You know, um, surface area is one of those things that also contributes to evaporation rates. If you have more surface area you have more opportunity for those water molecules to get enough kinetic energy in order to break those bonds and turn into vapor. NFT doesn't really have a lot of surface area when you're growing in those thin strips. The, the water is only coming through on a thin strip. So that's not too much of a concern. It's not something that you would really want to fight. You can cover up the holes that you're not growing in and that'll help reduce you know, the, uh, the entry of uh, sunlight and the release of, um, of that water vapor. But it's not something that's a huge deal that you're gonna wanna you know, fight about. But that's something that you could do if it, if it is a big concern. So you know, what we're doing passively here, we're reducing the amount of evaporation by having these rafts here. NFT, you know, like I said, it's a thin film of water that's going through the channels. The surface area isn't that, you know, isn't that large. So it's not going to have a lot of evaporation that's occurring, although there still is going to be some that occurs in those channels, right? These are some of the things that you could do to help reduce it, right? So I hope that helps, uh, helps you out, gives you some insight on evaporation. And some of you guys out there that may have been wondering about evaporation when it's uh, related to aquaponics, you know, and some of the things that you can do, right? So with that being said, I want to thank you guys once again for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate you guys out there, and hopefully you guys have learned something. So if you guys want more help, you can visit the theschoolofaquaponics.com or click on the link below to get a free aquaponics course and starter guide, you know, and you can get growing. Right, so if you have any other questions, be sure to submit them below in the comment section below, and then we'll add it to the queue. So until next time, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>